Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. Lock is a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. Friends, welcome back to God's Playbook. Today we're going to answer a question from one of our listeners, and you know who you are when I tell you the question. The question is, where do priests live? What a great question. Thanks for asking. So, depending on the type of priest, this answer might be a little bit different, because priests can live in a variety of different ways. A diocesan priest, such as myself, one who belongs to a diocese or territory, in my case, I belong to the Diocese of St. Catharines, shout out to the best diocese in the world, us priests are normally serving in a parish as a diocesan priest Our parish is our top priority. And so as the bishop's delegate in each church, the diocesan priest often lives in what's called a rectory. A rectory is the church word for the church house where the priest resides. Rectories, though not always, are on the same campus as the church. When the church was built, if at all possible, The rectory is usually attached to the church proper, whether it shares the same walls as the church or on the same campus. The reason for this is in the case of an emergency, if for whatever reason phone lines were down or the doors were locked and a priest was needed in an emergency, the people of the parish would know to go right to the rectory, which is right at the church, and knock on the door, ring the doorbell, wake the priest up, or get the priest's attention if he's at work in the office or perhaps in prayer in the church, and ask for his assistance, usually when somebody is sick, dying, or some other emergency. In some cases, when the church was built because of land space or perhaps local rules at the time, the rectory may not be able to be built on the same church campus. And so then a rectory is then erected or purchased, a regular home is then transformed into a rectory within a certain radius from the church. Again, the priest is expected to live very close to the parish, so that way he can respond to emergencies and be close to his people as best as possible. I want you to think of when you look at a city or a town and how fire stations are erected. Fire stations are developed so that way within a given territory, it would only take the fire truck so long to be able to respond to a fire call. This is the same thing in the church. Now, there are other types of priests called religious priests. Religious priests belonging to a religious order, they may also, if living in a parish, live in a rectory. Oftentimes, religious priests are called to live in community. So there may be two or three or many priests living in a rectory together. They may be serving the same community or different ones. But a religious congregation often lives in community, where for diocesan priests, they may have multiple priests serving the same parish living in the same rectory, but there may be many rectories where it's just one priest residing there. Monks or priests may also live in what's called a monastery. A monastery is a place in which, again, a particular group of men as professed religious and or ordained priests live together in a particular place in which they reside, pray, work, as a community, as a family. Priests normally don't live on their own. However, if a priest has a specialized ministry, perhaps as a hospital chaplain, or as a chaplain to a senior home, or perhaps to a high school, or some other specialized ministry, they may live in a rectory with other priests, or they may be given permission by their religious order or by their local bishop 
to have an apartment, a condo, or some other residence where they live to allow them to continue their ministry to the people they serve. Once priests retire from active ministry, and each area sets what that age is, usually 70 or 75 years old, then that priest is free to retire and continue to live in a parish, or perhaps because of their own investments or family legacies left to them, they may have their own family home that they live in, or they can perhaps rent a condo or purchase a condo or rent an apartment to look after themselves. A religious priest, upon their retirement, their religious congregation provides a place for them to live. And again, in some cases, the religious congregation may provide them with an apartment, a condo, or a house where they may be living, depending on their own situation. I'd like to extend the question to what happens with religious women? Where do they live? Where do sisters and nuns live? Sisters and nuns live in a house, not a rectory, but what's called a convent. A convent is a place where a single sister or perhaps a group of nuns would live together in community. Normally, religious sisters live in a community. But in some cases, again, depending on their specialized ministry, they may have permission from their religious order to live on their own, perhaps an apartment, a condo, a house, etc. And once again, a convent is a place where sisters gather to pray, to work, and live as a community as they grow as God's children. Convents can be anywhere in the world, and they are found globally. They are places of prayer. In some cases, they may be a purchased house, or perhaps it was built from scratch as a mother house, you might hear that term. A mother house is the head convent for a particular order. We're often mother superior and those in authority may live as they govern over the religious body of women. Deacons who also have a ministry in the church, those that are permanent deacons live with their families. Permanent deacons are able to marry and they serve in the church more in a volunteer position, uh, but they are not to live in rectories as priests. Transitional deacons, those who are pursuing priesthood, could also live in rectories and in religious houses as they prepare for ordained ministry. Bishops also live in rectories, sometimes attached to their cathedral, or perhaps sometimes the bishop may have a separate residence where he lives with other chancery officials. Chancery means the place where the bishop works. So think of the church's head office in the local area, sort of speak. Or he may live on his own in his bishop's residence for a variety of reasons. Again, the bishop resides within his own diocese and territory, and this is so he can respond to the needs of the local church in a very quick and readily way. Now, rectories are not owned by the priest who lives there. As long as the priest is called to serve in a particular space, they are welcome to live in the rectory. But as soon as a priest's ministry ends, then he is asked to move out so that the newly appointed priest can live there. When a priest belongs to a religious community, even if his ministry changes in a local area, he could continue, or in the case of a religious sister, she could continue to live in the local monastery or convent, even if their ministry changes. But for a diocesan priest, they must move out. So this also means that the house is not their own. It's owned by the diocese, and then it's looked after by the local parish. So part of the bills of a rectory are looked after by the people as a result of they want to be able to have a local priest to look after their needs. And so the hydro bill, the heating bill, the air conditioning, etc., etc., all the utilities 
are part of the overall operations of a parish. When it comes to a vehicle, it also depends on the particular priest or religious person. For a diocesan priest, the church does not give me a car. As a diocesan priest, I am responsible for the ownership of my own vehicle to allow me to serve in ministry, and so part of my salary is to go towards that. A religious priest, brother or sister, they are looked after by their religious community, so they don't own the vehicle they drive, just like they don't own the house they live in, but they are welcome to use that vehicle so long as they are serving in a particular ministry or have a particular need. So we see that shelter is very important, just as it is for every human being to have a place to lay one's head. But the location of where a priest lives is very important to allow him to minister in an appropriate way and to be found so that in the case of emergency, Father can respond. And this is also true of religious brothers and sisters. So thank you for the great question as we learn about what it means to live as a priest, as a bishop, as a deacon, and as a religious sister or brother. For God's Playbook, I'm Father Rico. God loves you and so do I. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us using any of our affiliate links in the description below via Budsprout, Ko-Fi, or GoFundMe. Thanks, and God bless.